Welcome to Midnight Menu Plus One. I'm Ray Kanata. And I'm Margot Moss. Midnight Menu Plus One is a food lifestyle show on the podcast network. It's NewOrleans.com. Tonight, we're at the NOLA Brewing Tap Room in the Irish Channel. The Tap Room is NOLA Brewing's on-site watering hole. They serve NOLA's regular lineup of craft beer as well as eight specialty brews you can't get anywhere else. The Tap Room is open seven days a week, weekdays from 2 to 11 p.m. and weekends from 11 in the morning till 11.30 p.m. Friends, I'm so glad you could join us each week on Midnight Menu Plus One. Margo and I invite a member of New Orleans restaurant and food community to have a beer with us, and we invite them to bring along their own guest, a Plus One. We never know who the Plus One's going to be. It can be a, a friend, a neighbor, a family member, a fellow restaurant colleague, just about anybody. Well, our special guest on Midnight Menu Plus One tonight is Michael Yusko of Belloc, and um, he's an indie filmmaker. So, uh, yeah, tonight promises to be uh, our most uh, eccentric show ever, I think. <laughs> our listeners will find out why in just a moment. But uh, before we do that and get, uh, get with Michael and, and his plus one, and I heard there's a plus two also, uh, before we do that, let's briefly catch up on this week's culinary adventures. And so, Margo, did you, uh, I know you had a lot of adventures. Do you have any culinary ones? Did you eat anything uh, well, noteworthy? I cooked a lot this week because um, I heard some devastating news that um good eggs yeah is leaving new orleans right leaving everywhere except for san francisco i yes. think they're retracting all the way back to their original home base right yes yeah. so i had gotten in my last order and i uh. Uh, have a lot of my favorite products and so uh, i don't have any uh out to dinner stories do, do you have any uh culinary adventures you want to I had, a, I had a bunch, but I'll just mention one because I got a feeling our others, we're going to have an abundance of material tonight. But uh, I, I, uh, Company Burger, I haven't put a plug in for a long time. I go there a ton, but this is the first time I think I've gone in recent memory where I didn't get the burger. I got the chicken fried steak, and it just seemed wrong, but it was so right. It was really amazing. It was so tender. You know, those tend to be really chewy. It was super mm-hmm. tender, and it was, there were two steaks actually on it. And it was just uh, unbelievable. We had Adam, I remember, on the show a while back, and he's one of our one of our favorite guests. Um, Sounds and, yeah. good. Oh, it was unbelievable. So, so, so good. Beyond good. I mean, just really, the, the place surprises me every time. Well, listen, um, I think it's time for our special guest uh, to uh, jump in. Michael uh, has, I don't really understand what we're doing with Michael tonight, but he is a return guest that we've we, we, we rarely do that but uh, my, both michael and wayne are here they were both our uh they were both our guests what about a year ago or so you think yep. margo and um at the time michael was uh was heading up cellar door one of our favorite um bars in town and wayne was there working with them and since then they've moved on to other other uh adventures and i think uh michael's got a special sort of uh set up for us tonight so okay. okay, so Michael, uh, your right. plus one is already go. with us. Wayne, why don't you explain to us what we're doing tonight? This is a uh, complete departure from our normal format. And if you you're a first-time listener, right. friends, uh, be aware this is not what we normally do. Okay. All right, what we're doing tonight is we're shooting. A, I'm shooting a film, feature film called Bookie, and tonight we're shooting a, a scene that's going to be in Bookie about Wayne and I trying to shoot a scene to be in the film <laughs> on what do you call on it? your show what do you, so you, I guess you, you said that now we got a show within a show a film within a film meta? it's a meta I'm, it's making a meta. A, I'm making a meta film we're so, a meta so wait so you're, you're filming a, the you're filming right a show now. within a show and right. then we're using it for our show so it's a show within a show within a show correct yeah, yeah there's a see, lot of art happens. going on right now uh, <laughs> on a lot of depths <laughs> I've got to make a movie. This is gonna. This is the first uh, first scene in the movie. I haven't shot anything else yet. Just some rehearsals. So this is scene number one. Okay. So what are we doing for your scene? We're just we're gonna t- we're just doing the show. It's oh, the we're show. just gonna do the show. The show's okay. the thing. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So I'm on the show <laughs> with Wayne to shoot my first scene for Bookie. That's what's happening. Okay. So, so I so can ask you any question I would ask you yeah, before. Anything. So like we're not doing like a cut thing or anything. We're just doing the sh- show I'll for the show. I'll cut this up. I'll cut it up. But like there's we'll no just talk natural. Okay. All right. Natural. So, so Michael, catch we us up. Wanna, we want to have a good show. I want to okay. have a good show for you guys here. That's okay. what we want to do. Excellent. All right. So Michael, uh, catch us up on what you've done since Cellar Door. You're no longer okay. at Cellar Door. No longer at Cellar Door. Uh, uh, there was, was a falling out. That was peaceful. 
<laughs> peaceful falling out. Oh, dude, uh, I fell out. Like, I was like, I'm out of here, man. You guys, you're not going to have yes go around. I'm fucking, I'm gone, you know. Wow. Yeah. So, so what'd that look like, Wayne? It looked like me, like, you know, walking down the, uh, the alleyway, like, you know, throwing my suit onto the sidewalk. They and didn't like, kick you in the ass as you went? Oh, no. They were like, please go back. Well, we you got a text. You. you got a text from my business partner, right? To stay. Oh, yeah. No, I said I got to go with Mike. So that was the end of that. Yeah. I had some people come with me. And that was nice. pretty much like the end of that bar. Like, you know, after that, it's, it's never been the same. Really? Oh, yeah. You guys took it down? We took, we took it down by leaving. Like, you know, <laughs> that place was, you know, basically held up by our, by our spirit. Wayne and I. Particularly me. I hope that's not true because I love that place. That place was awesome. Oh, it's I great. Been lately. It's cool. It's a beautiful building. Uh, yeah. They're actually doing lunch now. And, uh, you know, actually, Michael, yeah. hold on a second. We need to back up. Yeah, okay. Since we've broken from our format and had Wayne just jump in at the beginning, normally okay. you introduce your plus one. Okay. So for folks that didn't hear the last show, why don't you tell us who Wayne is and why you selected him as your plus one. Okay, my plus one's uh, well, Wayne. You know, I'm an actor. I'm Mike's, I'm Mike's actor. <laughs> Okay, my plus one is acting? Wayne Corbett, and uh, he's uh, he's going to be my co-star in Film Bookie, and uh, he's he's great. He's great radio. What's That's his current employment? One. Current employment. Uh, what do you? Uh, Currently, you're... I am I am the garmanger at Lolette Restaurant, which is very uh, you know very high end place. High end. Fancy, John Harris fancy. place. Oh yeah, uptown. yeah, yeah. John, you know, fucking yeah. Harris. Yeah, we're uh, you know we're all about the uh, you know fine dining. Um, so that's like what my gig now is. Uh, after Cellar Door, I uh, took like, you know, probably like a brief like three or four months off and just kind of rode my bike around New Orleans. And then I got a gig at Stein's Deli. Great and deli. Great deli. Like it's, you know, they got like the best uh, imported like pastrami and, and salmon and all that stuff in the world. And I did that for a little bit. Worked for Dan. Uh, you know, made, the- I, I made the bread. I was the bread guy there for a little bit. You know, and uh, you know, I learned I learned like the deli game. You know, and, and uh, how long did you do that? About two months. About two months. Two now, months. why? Now, why didn't that last? Because like, deli guys are like the worst guys on the planet. Like Dan's a sweetheart. <laughs> like Dan, Dan is the nicest boss I ever had. When he's awake, you know, when he's awake. But there's this, there's this like. These Does he guys. sleep on the job? He sleeps on the job. I mean, you know. He does. And while he's sleeping, That's like these guys form. are just he's just running amok. Uh, uh, huge assholes work there, you know. <laughs> they're they're assholes. The, I've, the, I've, they're just they're miserable. I've never had awful, like bad encounters with, with small in, people. Anybody <laughs> in my life until I until I worked at this deli, and then every day it was it was like being back in junior high. They would like write like things about me on the bathroom wall, like Wayne sucks. Seriously, how'd you know it was them? Because like it's the employee bathroom, only the employees <laughs> go in there. Like that would have been that would have been really weird if it was like the customers, like you know, <laughs> this deli used to be awesome, but Wayne sucks, you know, on, on the bathroom wall. Wait, so in the employee bathroom, they're like they're not doing it to be funny. They're they're, they're ma- being they're mean. Like they're, they're like mean. they're, they're mean. like all like, like playground. They're mean. at they're at that like. Wait, what kind of things were they mean, picking on you about? They I were, want you to relive it, but they would like draw pictures of me as like being mean, like with an angry face and like uh, milking milking the clock or something like that like they were just they were all about like all this hatred towards one me, of right? the guys was a good artist so what it is is <laughs> what it is, is like these, these guys as a cow these guys are limited lips. in their skill set and they they do the same job every day for five years the same way and as soon as anybody else comes in and does something like like i'm a i'm a real chef like i can handle like a lot of stuff all at once but like this one guy couldn't like cook eggs in the morning if I was like standing in a certain position and he would like he would like throw a fit you know just shit like that and so you uh, continue to stand there I just would continue to stand there and, and it got to be like a very adversarial like relationship where to the point where like I, I thought like we would we would get in the fisticuffs I thought there was going to be like blows traded you know which is something I've never even done in my life but I was like seriously mad and then Dan's like such a nice guy he's like well you know uh, he's so laid back you know he's like hey Wayne uh, you know employee is there they're kind of like a, a, a piece of equipment in a way. Like you can see, say you got that mixer there, and it's like you know it never breaks down, and that's like a Regis. And then you got like some uh, that toaster oven, and it needs like constant repair, you know. And that's another guy, you know. Like so, that's like his philosophy is just to, just to not have no control. He would, he's the owner of the place, and he basically be like, yeah, they just they just uh, they they keep me. At, they tell me they stay at the cash register. They don't get into it. And he's like, I don't, I can't really get into it back there, you know. And I'm like, dude, aren't you everybody's boss? Like, 
What, All right, this let is, me ask you: yeah. Did you have to throw sand from your pocket? At Did, any, in anybody's it got eyes? to that point where I was, I was, it was going to get prison. Like it was going <laughs> to. Like we I was sharpening a shank, and they were sharpening <laughs> a shank, and somebody was going to stab somebody. And then I just, I had, to, I had to just relieve myself from the, from the situation. All right, we, we should make a disclaimer here: uh, Stein's representatives are not present. You know, we love Dan Stein. And I don't think they yeah, would argue. And also, uh, Stein's mm-hmm. Deli is uh, is everybody's favorite uh, everybody's New York style del- deli. Best pastrami city. sandwich in town. Yeah. Yeah, you, super thick. I got TMJ. I can't get my jaw around it. I love the TMJ. Yeah, it's all, it's it's too, all good stuff. It's almost too big. New York. <laughs> like, you know, but they don't actually, like, cook anything. Like, they're, like, professional, like, package openers, and, like, they put a sandwich together. It's not like, you know, like a, like a restaurant. All right, so did you do something else between Stein's and Lillette? Well, no, because then, like, John was, like, heard that I was about to get fired or quit or something like that, and he was, like, he was, like, on the text. He was, like, you got to come back. You got to come back, you know? And I was, like, I was, like, chef, man, like, I just had this terrible experience. Like, I can't. Yeah. I can't go. I I'm, I don't think my heart's in it. Like I I'm I'm terrible at this, you know, because I was like demoralized, right? And John's like, we spent two days. If you know John Harris, you know that he wouldn't ask anybody anything. But literally, he, we spent two days texting back and forth, him trying to convince me to come back and take the job. And when I finally relented, and I was like, okay, can you pay me like this much money? And he's like, yeah, I can do that for you. But like in the future, like don't tell someone how terrible you are and how you don't want to <laughs> have, want the job and then ask him for all this money. Like, that's not how it usually works. So that's how cool he is. All right. So, Michael, you're at Belloc. Yes. And you're doing the same thing at Belloc that you were doing at Cellador, essentially? Yeah, I'm the the GM. Just holding holding it down, keeping things together. All Um, right. Well, tell us about Belloc. Belloc, it's, uh, if you don't know Belloc, it's uh, a cocktail bar that's uh, uh, vermouth and sherry-focused cocktails part of the whole Cure family. Right. It was the second bar. Neil Bodenheimer and Kirk Estopinol did Cure, and uh, Balak is their second bar. Inside the Hotel Modern, uh, delicious cocktails. Uh, yeah, I do about, I don't know, 25% of what I was doing at Cellar Door. So it's, it's beautiful. What do you mean you doing 25%? I just don't work as much as I did <laughs> at It's Cellar a lot Door. easier? Yeah, because Cellar Door was kind of, you know, I was part of the bar. I was a partner, so it was uh, 24-7 mentally maybe 60 hours physically you know but huh. uh now i have other people doing my job at Balak. i have i have a solid number two he thinks he actually works here his name is lafink and uh lafink lafink, lafink has a management background so that's his real name he, lafink lafink matt lafink he's here tonight he's from philly he's not here tonight no he's oh. at Balak, but he works here oh he he's works a, here he's sometimes. a beer guy but he's like coming from a management background so he thinks he's a manager and i've just i've let him I let I've let him be manager for two thirteen an hour. While I, <laughs> I like while I, while I like block. I, I make my salary doing nothing. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I, we were there about my wife and I and another couple about a month ago, and fun, phenomenal. Um, but I noticed one thing: you had one guy doing everything. Like this guy, like uh, he he like made the drinks, took all the orders, right. and I think he, I, I swear I think he made the food too because he ran into the kitchen. <laughs> he was in the kitchen for a long time and came out with our food. That's the worst part of the job. You got to run all the way over there to grab the but food. But that's, that's like next the door. Point. Like he does great service. Because you have a kitchen over there. Literally, you get like one bartender that. per one customer. Like every time I've been in there, I've had I've been treated well because like you know I was the only guy in there. You know, and there's <laughs> there's like there's you know they they can take care of you like right there. I mean, I it's a, a great, great bar. Talk about a me. lot of uh, attention, uh, not in a positive way. Like they want to give you one-on-one attention. Well, Some thank you. I, I, I feel that. Too. Pretty yeah. charismatic guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's very lovely here. Yeah, they, they, in other cities they call the police, but they know that that takes too long. Here in New know. Orleans, like the police are like, shh. There's a crazy at Balak, oh, please. <laughs> you know, we have other priorities. We'll come by and see it next week. Oh. All right. Well. All right. Would, was I talking or what? What do you? Can I say something here? Frank? <laughs> Am I talking too much? No, you're not talking too much. I like all when right. you talk. Well, I'm all nervous. I was know? talking about Balak for it's, a moment. It's a nerve-wracking thing, and I talk a lot when I get nervous. Like, you know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Balak. <laughs> That's all I got about Balak. All right. That's it. Balak, that's oh, it. You got to have more than that. It's a no, great place. So, like, uh, kind of looks like what? a Russian mafia hangout from like back in the day. It's all red. It's got a lot of red lights. Right, right on the circle. We don't know what we're going to be calling the circle. By the time this show comes think, out, uh, it may have a new name. I think uh, my, the plus two, uh, Mr. Guy Lyman, will have something to say about the circle. All right. I thought his name was little, Gary. Little. Gary. <laughs> Fucking Gary. Sorry. All right. Are we ready are for the plus two? Okay. We're breaking, yeah, we're breaking all we formats yeah, of the show. We can, s- you, we can s- you tell me. 
Well, I want. I kind of. Can we talk about, uh, talk what, about what your film is about, about and yeah, what you're? Okay, uh, so I raised I raised some money on Kickstarter over a year ago, about fifteen fifteen k, and uh, then the bar opened. Just we got funding like right uh, when I was about to make my film, so I couldn't do anything. Uh, couldn't do the film because I was invested in Cellar Door. So now, now, like I said, I have someone else managing the bar that I'm a manager at. So I have, I have time to make the film. So now it's become, it's a meta film. I don't know what I'm doing with it, but uh, I it's, just learned it's about a, meta. It's a meta. What is film. a meta film? It's a, you know, like a, a film about a film kind of it's, uh, levels, mirrors, uh, self-referential. We're like pretending kind of to pretend not to pretend. Yeah. Have, uh, eight and a half by Fellini. Uh, Stardust Memories, Woody Allen. Those are my I two. Saw that. That was those really are my good. two. Uh, I've watched those a few times. What's that's, some that's more um, recent films that would would describe what Nothing. a meta? Oh no, 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 no. no. Okay. Birdman. Birdman okay. was kind of meta. Uh, okay. I just watched Birdman that was kind of like meta. last week. But not. The, I'm, my, so yeah, you loved it, huh? I thought the end was a little weird. I think it was cop out, but. Uh, no, so he had powers. Like I knew he had powers all the time. I was like, Did this you, guy's got I powers. I didn't see it. Jesus. Wait, spoiler alert. You just ruined it. Spoiler alert. You but ruined I, it for that's me. That's all right. Just don't say anything more about <laughs> it. I can't talk about the... No more Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> now, but that movie's been out for like five years already. Like everyone's seen this. Gonna see about it. five years, yeah. Wow. Birdman. I think, it's, I think, <laughs> it, powers, I think like maybe it's a year. Um, okay, so basically you're... He's trapped. You, so basically you don't show up for work and you make a film instead and they're Correct. paying you. Correct. Okay. I was just in New York. I relate to Birdman. Actually uh, meeting with uh, a couple actresses that uh, are actually like legit. Uh, they've been in movies and they talk want... Talk about the Craigslist ad you know, in they're, inter- they're interested in uh, being... Okay, I'll talk about that too. They're interested in being in the film. I sent them my shorts. They like them. So this is kind of a new new thing for me usually I just grab my friends and make a film but now I'm, I'm actually trying to cast good actresses experienced actresses and uh, just and actresses a good crew. I, Actress- is there men I, any men the, besides you I got and the Wayne actors, me and Wayne okay. that's it a few other actors um, I don't need an actor who's a better actor than me so I can't hire a professional actor that would be that's I have to be the best I don't know <laughs> uh, I can't get Upstage, although Wayne likes to upstage me every now and then. <laughs> so the thing I've been doing is I've been taking out ads on Craigslist as well for actresses in Los Angeles, and Perfect. they respond. And what I, kind of actresses respond to Craigslist? Ads? And any, what kind of ad kind of do you actresses. put on there? It's interesting. I just. I mean, I you mean, get like Meryl, of, you're not going to get Meryl really Streep that way, right? Slimy ad. What's that? <laughs> What's a slimy ad look like? Well, I'm just. I actually one ad I put out. I quoted. Uh, I pretty much quoted Fellini. He used to take out these ads in newspapers all around uh, the the world, Europe, for actresses. And pretty much you you feel like you look like a Renaissance woman. You feel like you're just absolutely gorgeous every day that you look in the mirror. If you do. I need you to be in my film. <laughs> Something like that. that I'm sound, paraphrasing what I put in there. That doesn't sound pervy at all. I'm f- I've f- I just turned 41 yesterday, and uh, I've been drinking like I, I-, I want to die right now. <laughs> yeah, I know I look fresh, but uh, <laughs> you it's do, been a rough. It's been a, I went to some hipster rave, you know, did some Molly, and almost <laughs> I grabbed. There was a there was a there's there was hipster a skinny, raves in the skinny world. Skinny little uh, skinny little black man who was leaning against the rail with his arm, and I thought his arm was a handrail at one point. I reached over, grabbed his, his arm, and he moved. And I was like, holy shit, I am fucked up. That's what drugs will he do w- Was he an art installation or just a normal person He's standing there? He's just a normal there? person on drugs as well. It was just a big, you know, hipster. Everyone's on Molly, you know. I had some guys rubbing up on me, and they'd ask me if, uh, hey, am I making you uncomfortable? I'm like, yes, make me uncomfortable. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> Several girlfriends. I, I love women. Uh, Wait, anyway, when did this happen? That's, that's my. Th- this the is two days ago. This is Thursday. Uh, What's today? Was this in Monday? New York or in, in New York? Oh, in New York. Okay. That's no, the rave was oh, Saturday. The I rave was Saturday. I thought this was here in New Orleans. I was. No, no, we didn't do that. No, stuff in New no. no. They don't have that kind Way of thing cooler than that. <laughs> it's too hot for that shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did they take Molly die on the section? sidewalk? No. Listen, I I looked. You know, I was I'm the youngest. I was the youngest looking. Man, there. Although it's probably youngest the looking guy. In youngest forehead, looking, man. or, or, or I think I look like. I think I'm. Wait, I it, can represent twenties. No. There's another voice on the mic now. Why don't you yes. introduce your plus two? Okay, this is my plus two. Uh, Gary Lyman. 
He uh, owns an art gallery, uh, actually next to uh, Bologna Tavern, Willette's. Um, he's been he's been an actor in uh, a couple of my films, and uh, he's uh, he's a genius. Just uh, I don't know, just, you're just kind of a genius, right? I'll accept that. Yeah, yeah. He's very, very, <laughs> very. Uh, He's a funny son of a bitch. He's been uh, he's been great. He's been a great actor in, in my. So does he play himself films. in the film? He is plays, that how it works? He plays himself basically, but it's you know, a, it's a. Except it's a I pretend to be I pretend to be successful in the yeah. film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining us, Gary. Can uh, you tell us a little bit about your gallery and what? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, well, I'm quote unquote an art dealer, and quote unquote. Uh, a writer but I'm mostly not no quotes uh, unemployed you know <laughs> but uh, okay it's a good gig you know because I get to say I'm an art dealer and uh, I'm a writer which is the two best things you know um, and and you know, it gets me a lot of dates besides a hairdresser uh, it gets me a lot of dates if you're if you're like a art art gallery owner you're usually gay right but if you're straight and an art gallery That's a owner. Whole market that oh is man, it's you, like a layer. I mean, it's like being a straight hairdresser, women. like being a straight flight attendant. You know, I mean, you got your. Yeah. Was this something you learned about, or did that lead you into the art gallery? Business? No, I already knew a lot about art, and then I thought this is kind of the the perfect storm. You know, it's like I want to move back to New Orleans. You know, uh, I'll open an art gallery. I have no business sense at all, and that's a bad business even for someone who does have good business sense. But um, to move but, back to New Orleans. Well, no, move back to New Orleans was a great idea, but to open an art gallery is a terrible idea for almost anybody, unless unless they've got a lot of money to invest in a bunch of great paintings right up front. It's a terrible business. Anything that's fun like that and sounds interesting and <laughs> like glamorous is going to be a terrible business. Just paint just your own paintings and then just like sell those. That's even harder, you know, uh-huh. to do to do that. But uh, but it's yeah, it was kind of a whim, kind of a folly, and. Uh-huh. Uh, and we do sell a lot, you know, we sell a lot of paintings. It's not enough to support my two little girls that I inherited, but, you know. Gary's a single dad. Might, I'm a single dad. Single I'm dad. a single dad. with this crowd. Wait. There's a lot of whim and a lot of folly. I like that. Yeah, um, that was kind of the, the coming back to New Orleans, right. that what it was about. No job, no, no, you know, now, just open an art gallery. Now, what I'm, co- the, now I'm confused. There's a guy lime in art gallery. Is he related to you? <laughs> uh, tangentially. I'll <laughs> leave it at that. On Magazine Street, right? Yeah. That's, Yeah. It's, it's, you know, Gary's is all three ago. We have to, anything we're doing, it's don't just trust that guy, though. That's fictional, uh, somewhat fictional. Yeah. All, all right. right, all right. This film, all right. we got to call him Gary. All this is all three right. Well, you can that's always right. edit that. For the movie, he's we're Gary. In a film. Yeah. For the movie, you're like, that's mostly not, me trying to That's dis- not like Cher's well, share he like, in the movie. She's not like Cher, you know. like, you Okay, know. would it's Guy mostly. say the same thing that Gary is saying? <laughs> well, or are you, um... Well, Because I am believing everything you say. Gary is more subdued than Guy. This is mostly Guy trying to disassociate himself from some of the stuff that Guy actually does do, you know, <laughs> and, and, and put it onto the uh, uh, Jekyll and, you know, the other side of the Jekyll and Hyde, you know. So that's why we do this in the movie is we, we kind of, uh, we make me Gary, you know. It's my alter ego. It's the bad guy. I used to be uh, the bad guy, but most of be, it's true. Most of it's true. I the used bad to be stuff. Guy's bartender, and he would come in and tell me these stories, and I just thought they were, you know, incredible. So for my, my film Chase, uh, Wayne, I shot Wayne for two days. I got nothing from him. No. <laughs> Completely <laughs> nothing bombed. About I'm really, I got that one scene with I'm, the French fries. I'm bad on the That's spot. The thing I got. Which was brilliant. Like I'm which good like off which camera. Brilliant. Which he knew. Um, which he knew was brilliant. He's like, I got one. And that he nailed. That was I make everybody laugh when the camera's not rolling. And as soon as it rolls, I choke. Like, you know, well, yeah. you, were, you were perfectly stoned that when the French fries scene. I think mm. you were... And that's a hard time. You had time. You that's just, a hard level to get you to get perfectly to, stoned. You like you can be on. not stoned enough and then too stoned, you know, but that perfect like little sweet spot is like only like five minutes and you got to like be there for it. Anyway, so he was horrible and I needed a, <laughs> I needed a film and there was a deadline. So I shot Gary and uh, just basically, you know, give me number just one, tell him the give truth me tracks, about my life. just say these things, right. tell me, you know, give right. me, which was you know, really obviously interesting at the time, you know, you know, he's an actor, he can, he knows, I'm not an actor, but well, you anyway. know how to create a, a character, my life You've created a character, my life was very dramatic and, uh, at the time, it was very dramatic, yeah, was. we were pretty much all this way to get around in the bar, for, like, Gary to get it's shot. not easy to pull that yeah. off, it's not easy to get on camera, 
It's not easy to get on camera yeah. and be funny. There was yeah. like yeah. there was like days guy, when guy we all sat film. at the bar. I worked there too, and we just were like waiting for someone to walk in and like shoot Gary. Like it was it was crazy, and it could have happened. It didn't happen, but it was like it didn't we, happen. We believed that it could have. They didn't I, want me to be in the bar too much because if that happened when I was in the bar, they might catch some of the sprayed bullets. <laughs> yeah, I was right. terrified. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. Like, time yeah. out, time out. Tell us about a bullet story. Like one, at least it sounds like there's more than one. Oh no, see that's why he's Gary. I know Gary. Gary can't tell we had a, we had a situation that didn't end well. <laughs> yeah, didn't end well. We Were you the shooter or the receiver? What, what happened? Yeah. Or I, just was, a, I was the would be receiver, receiver. or no, the wouldn't be. But I it was, was legit. The w- wouldn't want to be receiver. There was but, uh, yeah, it was. I mean, There's pretty much a stake. There's life, a stake on Gary's head. There was, there was yeah. Is there a chance yeah. we're going to get shot now? While no, we're we're, that's no, the he's, there's always a chance in New Orleans that you can get shot. Yeah, really horrible. The situation has resolved itself in a horrible way that we're. That that uh, we won't discuss, but it's gone away. No one's going to. Did get you have anymore. to leave wherever you moved from for? Uh, uh, were no, you no. on the run? No, not because of that. This happened after I had already moved. After I had already moved, but it did have did it, it did it did involve sheriffs and my children, you know. So, but as far as this, you guys ever heard of the know. witness protection program? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very complicated story, um, but it's now it's completely peaceful. But now, but there was know, a yeah, there was a point where there was a point where, where it we was very dramatic. The you guys ever so heard you of were the able to family? detach from your real situation by uh, discussing these traumatic things from a different perspective. Not well, really. I was no. terrified. So even while uh, I was describing it. Right? <laughs> I was going to say, right? Yeah, he's yeah. he's no, civil. Didn't detach me at all. It he was, just keeps it splitting was, personalities. Well, I mean, I like, just thought it would be like a. He's uh, got one named Betty. Okay, so it wasn't a good way to cope with the situation you're in. I thought it maybe it was therapeutic for you to deal with something like that to uh, have to an la- alter. Well, to it la- does always a- help to laugh about something terrible, as you know. You know, if you've ever, if you can. Now, some sometimes you can't. If it's too awful, you just can't. But when you get to the point where you can laugh about it, yes, then it's then it's nice. You know, and just just having to recount this stuff uh, during this film, you know, was it, it was kind of it did have its humorous side. It it had its. If you you gotta check out, so you want to see the the whole well part of the story. Uh, you can check out my short film Chase Chase uh, Vimeo Michael Yusko Vimeo Michael Yusko I, all my short films are on there uh, true it was the in the first one Chase, yes. Chase is the first and then Conejo is the sequel and uh, fucking Gary is a big part of it wow a yeah. sequel yeah. Yeah, a little sequel alright yeah. wow so. we're also we're shooting uh, this new movie Bookie which we're we're all super excited yeah. about Mike's been working on this thing for like years like, he's been promising me, yeah, we, like, a movie that, for years. He's like, you're going to be in a movie, you're going to be in a movie, you're going to be in a movie. And I'm like, okay, I'm always, always like, on my edge of my seat that this is going to be, you know, my time. You know, I've thrown pretty much every egg I have in the basket into Mike's, like, movie thing. And, <laughs> you know. That's always a good my idea. Mom, I tell my mom yeah. about it, and she's like, you know, okay, son, you're, you're going to make it. And then. Then like it's been years now. I'm letting down. So he's like John Waters, and you're like Divine, basically. That's uh, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who that is, but I agree with it. <laughs> Water, okay. Waters is remaking uh, Pink Flamingos without any profanity, because you think Why? that's the most. But I trust in Mike's genius. I don't know. Like, I heard I this think today. He can make a good movie. Just like today. you know. All right, so, so so I got Wayne. Here's the. I mean, I I I got this Kickstarter money, so I have people, you know, email me. You know, where's my five hundred dollars? Where, where's my where's my signed screenplay? When am I going to get to see this? You know, the, the premiere. That was and impressive. Everything. He made so I have all of that on, a, on his have, Kickstarter. Most of my friends oh. think I took the money and either gambled it away or, or invested it. Eight in, Mollies in the bar. and raves in Both New York. Both of which are true. Both nah, it's all true. it's all sitting. Both in the of which are, are not true, but. Uh, so you anyway, following Wayne, through? So my kicks, what's that? You're yeah. following through with I, your I gotta go, with yeah. your promise. We gotta oh, yeah, go. We gotta it. go. Now's o- the time. Otherwise, so. bullets may be flying at uh, bullets flying. For you, yeah. My Kickstarter backers. One yeah. guy. One guy has contacted me three times, and he's the only guy that pledged that I don't know. It's really bizarre. So I got a loose cannon. I might have to Spielberg. You know, I don't know. <laughs> the, I don't problem know is if you, the problem is if you don't know him, you're not going to see him coming. I'm just going to send him his five hundred dollars <laughs> back. That's what I'm going to do. No, uh, no, do that. You don't have five hundred dollars. <laughs> you haven't had five hundred dollars for six years. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, or Gary's like, the and most if you do, man. pay me back my two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I owe you a hundred. No, uh, I don't think you paid it down. That I did much. pay you back. Hmm? I paid you back. I PayPal you. It. I'm sure. I sent you a PayPal. I'm sure you paid me back all of it. All right. So how can we relate this to food at some point again? We we got okay. discussing food at the beginning. Well, we got. Uh, well, like my character in Bookie is going to be. 
you know, like myself and I'm like a food guy. So like that works. Like I'm trying to like come up with a character for the movie, you know, like Are I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to be like super depressed. Like I don't, I don't, I haven't decided yet. Like, do I want like laughter or I don't, or do I want like people to cry? You know, like, do I want to just be like morose and, you know, just <laughs> Laughter, Wayne. We want some laughter. Or a little do bit I both? need to be like, you know, upbeat and, and charming? Do I need to be like in character all the time or do I just be myself? Like Bookie's, like it's a, it's a Seems tough. Seems like you have a lot of power in this. It's a tough gig. Story. Yeah. I give him, we, choice. I give him, I give him some That's room the hard to figure part. it out himself. He's and if like, he doesn't, he I goes, figure hey, it out for him. That's just, kinda, just, just. Hey, just, just be funny on camera, and I'm like, well, f- fuck! How do you do that? <laughs> you know? Wait, are you the uh, uh, the bookie or the? Uh no, I'm like the sidekick. Like I'm just like the dude. That's, I got Who's some. I bookie? got some guy trying to. He, he wants to play the bookie. He wants to give me money to, fu- to pay to, you he wants to, to be. In he the wants to invest in the film so that he can play this bookie from Chicago. And he sends me a photo of his like forerunner the other day. I got a perfect like bookie car, and there's no bookie in the film. There's no bookie. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's a phone. It's, about, it's, the phone. it's about the screenplay bookie that I can't. It's about the film I can't make bookie. But they you know, won't there'll be flashbacks to bookies. But food. there's no. This guy thinks like it's a bookie. There's a big bo- the bookie's the star. So I think I might tell him that that's the case and see how much money <laughs> I can get out of him, and and shoot all these ridiculous scenes with him being bookie and just fucking cut him. And I would say, yeah. like, how you know this saying? movie... Yeah, is well, okay, here's you know, got, hey, you got, for art, you have to do... You know, you gotta Michael, do there's, there's, you one, there's one problem with that plan. This show's going on, uh, you know, on, uh, eternally on the internet and, uh, tomorrow. So he, he could, you know... Yes. If you tell him afterwards that wasn't the plan, he, he has... No, he'll never hear this show. He'll never hear it. He's the kind of guy that doesn't have internet, I don't <laughs> think. You know, you got those people. He's got dial-up. He what do you got? You barely have internet. What do you do? I got dial-up. You got dial-up. AOL. AOL. Yeah, AOL. AOL dial up. Even I have better than that. Even I have. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But Jesus, no. So Gary, right. I have an, another question for you about art. Um, what uh, what is the craziest artist you've had to uh, try and represent in your gallery? What was the most difficult? But uh, you're 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 glad you stuck with them. I'd have to name names. You don't have to name names. Yeah, tell a story We've, that's non-identifying. It's incredible how many, um, how many first-time artists who have having their first show have an amazingly terrible attitude about <laughs> already. Uh, yeah, already. Like their ego, like guys who are part li- part way through their career, guys and girls who are part way through their career sort of get it, and they know it's a tough business, you know, and they're generally pretty polite and pretty rational. It's the ones who are having their first show who walk into the gallery, you know, the day before the show and start trying to throw their weight around like they're a big deal. Like they're really important and significant and start telling you to clean this up and clean that up. And that's, that's what's very strange. That's what I've found very strange. And I'm not a veteran art dealer. This was a new thing to me. How selling, long have you been doing it? Six years. Okay. Six years. So but you're only six years into it and you got a store on, on magazine and a prime spot and everything too? That's, that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, until, in, until you see the, uh, until you see the, uh, talk, don't talk to my accountant. Let's, <laughs> let's, 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 you know, it's, it's a facade. It's all a complete, you know, it's a, it's a complete fabrication, but you know, it, it works. It works. Um, you know, we've, we've sold plenty of art. We have framing, which is good. And that helps pay the bills. And, uh, we have introduced some new artists, you know, who, uh, one guy who actually was a, uh, was a decent artist before a good artist and had gotten into drugs and alcohol and stuff and like 20 year hiatus didn't do anything we gave him his his uh we gave him his um you know new Excuse show to get his, get him back off his feet I just noticed on his the, feet the cameraman just went and plugged in his battery over there to the uh, to the wall socket isn't that insane that a camera cannot have a power cord that plugs into a wall that you constantly have to have this like rotation of batteries it's like it's like the bane of the movie business that these guys are all... I can imagine like on Jurassic Park, they're trying to shoot these dinosaurs and all of a sudden, they're like, all right, fucking hold up, everybody. You know, stop what you're doing. We got to change the fucking battery. We, I mean, should they have not have invented a camera that can plug into a, a reliable power source even with like a power, like a, like an extension cord, this should this should work. It's it's insane you to me. Only, you only worked on my films, and that's the problem because I don't. But it's everywhere. Like we should have, this should be a thing. I think it's it's a Kodak conspiracy. 
that they want to sell the batteries to the cameras they make. And they want to have like a, it's a union thing. There's like a guy that's like a professional camera hold, uh, batter, camera battery holder. He's got a backpack full of them. You know, he just stands there waiting with batteries. He's in the credits. He's listed he's in the as credits, battery holder, and you can't so. get rid of this guy because, like, you know, the union would come down on you. Like, I, I just, I just noticed that, and it bothers me because it's been pretty yeah. much like every day we go to shoot this movie, and I'm getting into my character, and I'm getting my shit ready to go, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait, wait. The battery's low, you know. That was mainly with Nino. Let's though. stop it. Scenes with, with Nino. It's every time. Every it's time Mike, we, we had cheap, a we had Mike a. Wait, wait, Nino Bongiorno? No, not that Nino. He's Italian. He's, Nino he, Nino Pastranostro. That's Greek. <laughs> Nino is Greek. Oh. And he's our father. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he came and helped out, helped shoot. When I didn't know what I mean, I, I was. Who wants to? But come as an hold artist, as an actor, like this, this, and this shit is. Yeah. That's because it's Mike uses toy equipment. You have to put two AA batteries in it. That's not your fault. No, look at that thing. It's like right there on the exactly. wall. It's like huge. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I mean, every field's got it's like unexplainables. <laughs> I, I'll never. No one can ever explain to me why uh, wait staff can be so attentive to an entire meal, and then 90 percent of them drop you right before it's time to get the check and then irritate the hell out of you right before you're about to well, tip them and, ma- and, then, and then make a meal. And it happens at the best restaurants. It's table afterwards. turning. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing it's in the, the world. It's what the, do you mean? I thought... Th- you turn the table. like they, they. No, that's the opposite of table well, turning. Well, you're saying they don't bring your check? Yeah, they you? don't bring my check. That's a common occurrence but it's all the time. Only- Honestly, they, 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 you know, they, they, no one can explain it to me. Don't try to explain it. I've had, I've had a million people try to explain it to me. Have you ever walked back into that it's back? It's metaphysical. It's area. Satan trying to ruin it my meal. It is so social. They are all just back there on their phones, talking. Like, it's, it's you know, really annoying, actually, to walk back there and see them all just, like, laz- lazing about. Um, they don't care. You know, they don't care. Servers don't care. They They're don't just care. trying to get through the show. They all want to be actors and whatever, to f- you know. Like, that's, that's not their gig. Like, that thing, it's different with a kitchen. Those guys actually, for the most part, want to be there. You know, like, they, right. they chose that, that as a career. But all the, the wait staff, they, they, you know, they're, they're there until they make it big in some other field. They're going to school. I feel like most people, the next most big kitchen people would DJ. spit in every dish if they could get away with it. Would they spit what? in it? I feel like most kitchen people would spit in every dish. Never. They get away with it. It's wow. never happened. It's uh, never uh, happened. You've never seen it happen, Wayne. I've never seen Promise it. Promise me you've never seen I it happen. I think it became part of the culture. I think everyone would buy into it. Even like, at a... We even at here, a, we spit in every even dish. Even at a, 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 a dirty-ass <laughs> deli like Stein's, I've never <laughs> seen anybody spit in the food. I wouldn't even think those guys would be capable of it. See, this is why I like open kitchens. And that way there's less a chance If anybody ever did it, then they would be they would be run out. Like you, you, you can't fuck up like that. Like yeah. it, it, it's no good. Yeah. You know, you gotta have, you gotta be a human being. We're covering we're covering some food. Here. I couldn't this say is, like if you yeah. go to the French Quarter. It's like the how same. I segue back in with that. Level, but you know, now nah, that does, that doesn't happen. You've never <laughs> seen it in a lifetime. Like of in, food. all right, so like McDonald's. I've never worked at McDonald's, but I hear like you know they yeah. they like <laughs> will will do that shit or they'll put something weird in it, but not a not a professional person that because those people that work in the kitchen. They love food. Like they love to. They love to please people. Like they're they're trying what to. What if they hate the person though? They're giving. Well, we have assholes come in all the time that that we hate. We see them. Their names on the ticket, and we're like, that guy comes in here at ten thirty every night to hit on the bartender, and he makes us stay an extra thirty minutes, and he orders three courses. Guy Lyman. And he does guy this Lyman. and that. It's not guy. Uh, although guy's probably capable of that shiny shit, but. Like, we have those guys, and even those guys get taken care of to the fullest extent. We sit there and bitch about them. We curse at them. You know, we this, this, that guy. You know, we know them by name. We have songs about them we sing. But <laughs> what's a song? Tell us one of your songs. Well, just, you know, like so-and-so, the, the, the stupid douchebag song. I don't know. We just, you just, you just, you just kind of roll with it because you're done. Like, you're finished at that time. Like, you're ready to clean up and go home. Like, it's been slow. Like, we get the shit. And then this guy comes in because, basically, like, he wants alone time with, with, with the front of the house staff. You know, he All wants right. to, like, be with, be with girls. Okay, Wayne, so I want you to try to explain another one for me that's sure. unexplainable. There's no good reason for this that I can, that I can come up with. You, you, they give you menus. You order. And then as soon as you order, they want to take away every menu. And if you ask them to keep a menu, it's like you've asked for like them to strip for you. And it's the craziest thing in the world. Why would they want to leave a menu at the table? Because that makes me more likely to pick it up and go, oh, damn, that sounds good. Let me, let me, get, let me get some more. Let me get another roll. Or let me get a, I would say you know, I, would I, know for that. I would know for sure. Like I've, no I've never, I've never waited. But that's like clutter on the table. And also, like, 
it's just it's just like kind of like umper you know like like it's just clutter like it's just like takes up space especially at a place like where i work at where like they would they would they need space on the on the table to even put plates down they I need feel, it to look good they I, don't feel want like, I feel like a jerk asking for a menu again say i'm still hungry or i see someone else that my wife had and i went oh crap i wish i'd gone that yeah let me get that too but the next you know? thing you know you got like three things piled up all over the place you know and yeah like, that's more that's more tip for you and everything too and i'm happier everybody's happier if they left the menu i don't understand it so you want them to leave the menu i want to leave one menu what just if we did, what if we just the hang, table of seven all, people leave one menu you should always what if we just hang one from like a string i always leave a you could all just i feel no one leaves any I feel like a, an asshole if I don't leave a menu. Really? You're yeah, the only I, one. I always leave You're a menu. You're the only one. But I don't work. I went to a restaurant I would say in New York that, where they wrote the on the um, poor form. paper. That's I just got. I just went, yeah. that's so I just went to diner. Their name on huh? I just went to oh, diner God. in Williamsburg, Hipsterville. Yeah, that's uh, and, uh, yeah, it was Andrew Tarlow. There was actually and, uh, a table that left because they got the menu on the tape. Granted, they were just they drunk, left young because idiots. they got the menu on oh, the well, tape. Oh, hipsters yeah. get mad about everything. Yeah. Though. Well, these guys weren't even hipsters. They were like frat boys, like stuck, uh, in, you know, stuck in a hipster bar. They didn't realize they walked to a hipster bar, uh, and they got the menu on the uh, on register tape, and they threw a fit and walked out. On but register anyway. tape. Yeah, the whole menu was written on register tape. That, that's not what you were saying. You were saying. Something. Oh, I thought oh. I was in the place that uh, is in a train car. In a train car. Oh, okay. Okay. In Williamsburg. Okay. Maybe I'm. That's it was where, a long Yeah, time. the diner. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, in yeah. a train car. That's what I'm talking about, I think. Maybe they. It's a uh, train well, car. I was there a long time ago. Okay. Okay, so now they put it on. I yeah. think that's clever. Yeah. It seems hipster, but it right. was a creative, cheap. Way they don't I have to print great. out a menu. Yeah, I think day. it's great. I tell you, the first thing I do when I hit it big and make money is I drop this hipster shit in the garbage, and I'm done with it. Like for now, I've got to kind of like run with it because you know I'm poor, but it's annoying. Three piece suits every day. It's annoying. Oh yes. You're no. not a hipster. You're no. hip. There's I've a big difference. There's a huge like difference. The, like the writing on the tape annoys me. You know. Writing on the tape, Face. like in film. Well, no, like the, what are you talking about? The diner, like the fact that there's a hipster diner, you know, annoys me. I don't. Want no, I like that. That segregates them. That puts them all in one spot, so I don't have to see them. Yeah. It's like we, the hipster coffee shops in New Orleans. We only have like three of them, but it's great. But they then have they don't the show up in my coffee. coffee shop. But they have the best. Yeah, you got to keep yeah. running from the. the they really do. Coffee. You pay five dollars for a cup of coffee, but place. it makes a difference. I know this girl, uh, Lauren at uh, Stein's uh, uh, co- uh, Cherry Coffee. Cherry Coffee. Oh yeah, they're good. They're good. She goes home and she has a personal roaster in her in her house and she roasts the coffee to different temperatures to figure out like what it's going to taste like and that's why she can charge so much for coffee because like it's really good and she really knows her shit like you know uh she's like maybe her stein andre are like the only three things i take away from that place you know that could i could have positive things to say i love that whole block i like the flag shop there i like district donuts flag shop those guys are great those guys brad and charles are the craziest dudes in the whole city they always say they always say hello and 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 they always have that uh, help wanted for like a for man only for man only (laughs) they got trouble for that i would walk to i would walk to work and before i walked in the steins i would stop and look at like h&r block which is next door and i was just kind of staring the mirror or staring the window there and i'd be like well like like what's that like what's what would that be like to do and then i would go in the steins and just be miserable i should have learned i would like look at the district donuts and i would be like i should have learned how to make a donut you know like there's a well you know we predicted that on the show, by the way. We predicted the advent of donuts, and Grant doubted me, and then it happened. Really? Uh, d- d- there was a donut renaissance in New Orleans there. that started on our show, really, to be honest. We announced it on our show. You were the, uh, the, the uh, proprietors. I you was like the prophet the, the, of it. No, I didn't, I didn't. I don't have a piece of it. I just announced it was going to happen, and it did. I, I saw it coming. You don't remember this, Margo? Oh, yeah. No, I would. It's ahead, the most I historic thing that's ever happened on our show. What I miss I is the frozen yogurt phase. Yeah. There was a time Til when tonight. this city had like Til 20 tonight. frozen yogurt shops, and it was glorious. Like there was a real like frozen yogurt. You don't want hipster things, beers. but you want yogurt shops. Dude, yogurt Bring shops suck. I don't think I'm gonna get any airtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I'm gonna get a beer. <laughs> every time, every time I was dying a bike accident, I, I my my very next stop is uh, Pinkberry because I just need I just need to like have that one thing that I think Mike walked up, walked off his own show. And it was guys, it was all you Wayne. Guys, this is UA. really difficult to interview when um, the the, when the guest is in here. The bar. But yeah, no, I had this whole Pinkberry thing going on to the point. You where could like, keep going all like, night, right? I would I would walk into Pinkberry on Canal Street, and uh, this this girl, there'd be a line of twenty people, and it's the most busiest touristy thing. And I was there so often that they knew my order. 
and they would make it. And when I went up there, they would, I would, I would not even have to say it. And I realized like, I'm here too often. So I started to go up to Uptown Pinkberry. Same thing happened. Like it was. You drive ridiculous. all the way uptown just because. No, I don't drive. I'm not a motorist. Oh, oh he rides his bike. I, I see him. Right. I see him all day long. Ray and I, Ray and I run into each other on a daily basis. At I call least. Ray, Air Day Ray, and he's got the hairdo and the Elvis thing going on. And I'm, you know, we cross paths and we we always say hello. Uh, us too. We're yeah. We've been yeah, yeah. We've been oh, hooking yeah. up lately. Running into Michael getting, all the time. Uh, you know what I learned about Ray though? Nominated now. Yeah, all yeah these, I got uh, nominated. Encounters right, is right. Ray likes to lounge. Like Ray's a lounger. You always see Ray like sitting outside, like like at the cafe. You know, he's never seems like he's in a hurry. You know, Ray's just kind of like taking it all in. And I wonder like how uh, it's deceptive. How you manage this. It's deceptive. I need this lifestyle. <laughs> all right, Michael, we're running out of time. So why don't you sort of tie the, these uh, crazy loose ends together for us and tell us a little bit about. OK, yeah. Well, I think I think uh, what I actually brought Gary on the show for was to talk about service industry life. And I know he well, had a few well, things he wanted to say. You were in the service? No, no. I was just next to it. Better perspective. As a but I got to see um, from an outsider's perspective, you know, Bouligny, you know, this restaurant. I got to see it start up and, and all the people who, got, who went to work there and all the incredible drama. You guys talk about the food business and, you know, it's like food and entertainment. But, but the craziness of the service industry world and the people who come and go from these bars and restaurants and they're... You know, most of them are kind of moving from one place to another, and the drama is just incredible. I mean, well, you could have examples. A, you could have a well. Make it more concrete. See, the two guys that are sitting at this table with me are in it, but like the romances, the fist fights, the drugs. Um, you know. Now you the, see that not even being behind. Uh, oh no, I see it spill out onto the sidewalk. Yeah, on the sidewalk the next from my. Like, see, I'm the next, next door, door neighbor. To the I get to life. yeah. Now, okay. now hold on a second. Our listeners need to know. We're not talking about a dive bar here, too. This is a very high end. And uh, at, at a high no, end. No, this is a very high end bar. High very end, nice. Great place, fantastic bar, right. fantastic restaurant attached oh, to no. it. Oh, no. You're talking about. But you still you're get. You're talking about fist fights. You still get, you know, get assholes. Fist that, uh, fights, frequent. drugs, pregnancy. You know, this is like. Uh, <laughs> pregnancy? <laughs> Have yeah. you seen, seen a baby <laughs> delivered? <laughs> you've seen babies uh, conceived in front of the bar. Oh, conceived. On, mag on magazine Well, screen. usually that's behind the bar, you know. And, <laughs> but. But uh, yeah, no, the service industry you see it is all. like an incest. Incredibly fascinating. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of um, service industry is very curious I mean, as to why no one's made from, a. So if you don't date somebody, in your, in the service that you're working with in the service industry, none then, of them have ever wanted to date me. Not once. I don't know. Then you. That's because it's you're really, you're really they've, lucky. Really lucky. Wait, so give me, give me an example of the most dramatic fist fight you've witnessed. Uh, that would, uh, that would have been between street. the uh, manager and his, his ex. Um, that would have been the most dramatic f no, physical that. fight that I've seen. You saw that too. I saw that. Yeah, that, that would have been the most shit. dramatic fight I've seen. Like just going at it, just uh, totally. Yeah, going at it. Police presence, you know, etc. Wow. Um, I was almost in a of couple of uh, really nasty ones, but it, we we avoided those. Um, but this was uh, this was, you know, a pleasant hour of the evening. You know, not not any. It wasn't a three in the morning yeah, kind of thing at all. I remember that. No, it was, there really was a point in that bar's like, time where there was at least three different happy women hour, that could have walked in there and with a gun and shot the place up. Like it was insane. Like, yeah, yeah. I was my, my, my ex was and my ex was guys, uh, was haunting the place them, at that know? time too. Yeah, it was. Like, it was she a was look, very. Was keep an eye on you. Uh, no, she was. She was in another state, but she could have shown up at any point. I mean, but this and other had, thre had threatened to do the that. other ex was actually in town and you never knew. Yeah, the other was one was in up. town and crazy. Very unnerving was, for everyone that worked yeah. there. Yeah, and this me. is, you know, like you just said, this is a very high end place, right? And but guy, you were a victim of this by living next door. I was, but you know, I enjoyed it in my own perverse way. Guy, what would you think of me when you when you first? Uh, what I think of you? When I oh, first I hated your I hated your guts because you had come from How'd Cure. Meet? He had come from Cure. And I was a regular at uh, at Bulony, and he had come from Cure, and he's got this. He's always talking about hipsters because he's, you know, privately very conscious that he he kind of has the hipster vibe. Right? I know, that, I know. So uh, he does. Boy. So he was at Cure, and he has Problem. this snotty kind of attitude. <laughs> he's, you know, he's he's not a he's not a bartender. He's a what do you call you guys? Like a he's a I'm a he's well, a you call drink those guys specialist. Mixologist. I don't know. mixologist. Yeah, mixologist. Of course, he has that mixologist look that. about him. Like I'm a, I'm a dick. Mixologist. I'm a dick, and you're apron. lucky if I make you a drink, even if you I pay look me. that way without. He looks that, that way. You have resting bitch face, right? Right. Rusty bitch face. Resting bitch face. Oh, 
Oh, we, we heard about this on the RBC. show the first time, too. Thanks, yeah. guy. Resting yeah. bitch? Yeah, rest, yeah, rest, look bitchy it up. Face. Resting yeah, yeah. bitchy face. It's all over the web. I can't anyway, I can't it's like he looks like an asshole even when he's not being one, all right? So I hate. I decided to hate him. Then I, des- then I decided, um, then I decided, you know what? I'm going to be nice to this guy. I don't know who this guy is. I can't look at a guy and decide he's terrible. Well, you had to you be. You had an epiphany. So you had to be. So yeah, I did. You I decided, you, you know, in the bar. I'm going to say hi to him. I'm going to be nice to him. I'm not going to just hate, because all the other bartenders already hated me, because I was always, a, you know, I was always starting shit in the bar and whatever. But <laughs> So I was real nice to Mike, and he liked he me. He says what's on you his know, mind. It's like, and, and the truth is, I like anyone who likes me, because I'm insecure, like everybody else. So guy he, he is he incredibly me. entertaining, you know, and guy, this, this hipster guy kind of liked me. Gary like, is the most honest person I've ever had a conversation yeah, I'll with. T- I'll tell the I've, truth. So. I've never had a more real conversation with anybody else other than Gary, because like, he has no interlocutor between, like, brain and mouth, you know, like that. And also, at the same time, like, I don't need to feel like I need to impress him in any way. So, like, I can actually let my guard down and be real. And Guy is, or Gary is just always <laughs> fucking himself. And he gives you the most bizarre fucking asinine sex advice that is just extremely wise at the moment. It's you know? always correct. I have, like, girl problems. He'll go, like, well, stop chasing tens. Like, you know. That's like, profound. Anyway, anyway, we, 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 uh. You know, there was a lot of the, the thing about the food business is people don't see all the drama going on underneath the surface in the back room. It's kind of like those British dramas where you have the upper class people in their little chateaus and, you know, whatever. And then you got the working people and they, they've made a it's a whole genre, you know, like upstairs, downstairs, you know, the servants uh, and the right. But in these restaurants, you know, even high so end taverns like a Jane Austen novel is what you're saying. Pretty yeah. much. All of all of them have incredible <laughs> drama going on behind the scenes. People sleeping with each other, people hitting each other, people threatening each other. No one ever tells know. me about that shit because like I'm known for having a big mouth and so it's been a thing where like don't tell Wayne cuz everybody will know. And also at the same time if you Wayne's want like everyone the to know iCloud. something you want it to be known, <laughs> then you tell me. And you know, wait, it's like the iCloud. I'm, I'm the, uh, I'm the town crier, and I never forget shit. Like I remember everything that ever happened four years down the it's line. It's horrible. You know? I know. He's the worst. I know it all, ever. and I just bring it up at all right. times. We got to wrap it up, guys. We're way over time. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. Um, our special guest tonight on Midnight Menu Plus One was Michael Yesko of Belloc, and his plus one was Wayne, and his plus two was Gary. Um, would you guys like to uh, give some uh, uh, websites? Okay, yeah, uh, any kind of, uh, you know. Okay, so Michael, uh, Michael Yesco, Vimeo. Vimeo, Michael Yesco, Y-U-S-K-O. search me up. Y-U-S, Y-U-S-K-O, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. And when's Belloc and, uh, open? Belloc is open. <sighs> when is Belloc open? It's seven days a week. It's five, five till uh, midnight, uh, five till two on weekends. Lee like circle. every, all right. Lee Circle on Lee Circle. Which what do we think about Lee Circle? Pro? No. Wait. You mean about Lee coming down? I'm not going to get into that. Okay. All right. Anyway, I thought he was the most frank guy you've ever met in your life. You won't do that. Everybody has an opinion on that. You, you want me to roll? On <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't mind. Go ahead. I want to hear. I want to. Uh, I would love to hear it. If Robert you E. Lee was a Southern hero. It, it it doesn't have to do with it doesn't have to do with what. Uh, no, I can't. I can't do it. Honestly, no, I can't do I'm, it. I'm, I'm liberal as fuck. All right. Well, Robert E. Lee was like, let's, right. let Gary. Bruce, uh, Gary, why don't you give, a, don't you give a plug head. for they your need. gallery? Tell us, uh, tell us where people can uh, connect. Oh, yeah. Well, all right. We, we feature mostly Southern art, uh, traditional Southern artists who are dead now, uh, young, cool, contemporary artists who are still painting. Um, it's on Magazine Street near Harry's Hardware, right between Louisiana and Napoleon. We're real friendly. We've got a lot of young people working in there. We do framing. So it's always kind of a fun environment. We have cocktails on Friday if you want to show up. Nice. And that's our gallery. Right. Sweet. I w- one more thing. I want to so I'm, I'm obviously making, I'm making a film here. It's going to be a masterpiece. And if anyone would like to invest or is interested in, in helping working on the film as crew do or thinks they're, thinks they're gorgeous, uh, wants to be... One of one of my actresses. Only uh, females. You only hire females. Only, only, yeah. The converse of the flag two. store. That's all I got. Uh, <laughs> get in touch with me, Michael Yesco, at, right. g- at gmail dot com, Facebook me, whatever. And Wayne, uh, I, it's I, been great. It's been great, guys. Cool, it's Wayne. Great. I hesitate to ask you, but uh, what, what do you want to plug? Uh, can you can you can you give us um, give us the Alice Deli plug? I don't know, man. Like, well, I guess if you wanted to find me, you can find me at like 
I like Whole Foods on there like two or three times a day. Um, in the in the window, <laughs> vegetable section. <you> know. <laughs> Probably looking for I, chicks. I do a couple laps and then I and then I go and sit and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty easily attainable if you go to Whole Foods. I'll be there. Oh yeah, and also I got a, a good camera now on my iPhone, so you can uh, you can follow my Instagram and I take pictures and shit on uh, it's the Birthday third present from me, the third Max Wayne Corbett, and it's the three, and I'll just pop right up like the lim- the number three, the three, and I'll just be right there. But uh, yeah, it's you know, it's like I take pictures of vegetables at Whole Foods. Random shit. I'll take. I took pictures of vegetables at Whole Foods when they when they took away the coconut water. I lodged a serious complaint, and I took pictures of the maple water that they had tried to replace the coconut water with. I got water pissed with. when they took some kettle chips Dude. away. I, all right, lobby to, to get them back. It. I got them. All right, got we've back. insulted we've insulted enough institutions tonight. We got we got to stop. And we have to thank our. Um, <laughs> I love Whole Foods. I would never say anything tonight, negative against Whole Foods. <laughs> petite Pet Care. And the Nola Brewing Tap Room for the awesome beer this evening. Yes, and uh, thank you. The this Nola, is my new favorite bar, by the way. This is a fantastic bar. The Nola Brewing Tap Room is open seven days a week. You can come here anytime, or you can join us back here again next week for another Midnight Menu Plus One. We look forward to seeing you next week. Till then, I'm Margo Moss. And I'm Ray Canada. Good night. Summer's almost over, but at Old Navy, the styles are as hot as ever. Get to Old Navy now for 30% off all jeans, 40% off all dresses, and 50% off all tees. That's right, get 30, 40, and 50% off all your favorite styles for the whole family, plus up to 75% off clearance. Hurry in fast. These deals won't last. The sale ends soon at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Valid in-store 822 to 828 and online 822 to 824. Excludes in-store clearance, bubbles, active, licensed, and men's package tees.